Take a look at these true positive rates for a model used to automatically give out loans. They tell us 63.2% of males who should have been given loans were given loans. However, this figure is only 44.3% for females. Clearly, this model is being unfair towards women. In fact, in using true positive rates in this way, we are applying a definition of fairness called equal opportunity. We'll explore this definition along with accuracy, equalized odds, and disparate impact. This video builds on another where we did an exploratory fairness analysis. There, we try to quantify characteristics in our data that could potentially lead to an unfair model. Now, we are going to apply different definitions to understand if the model is actually unfair. The idea is that you can link back to the exploratory analysis to figure out what is causing the unfairness. By the way, if you want the Python code for this analysis, then check out the article linked in the description. Also, make sure to wait until the end of the video where I explain how you can get access to a Python SHAP course, a package used to understand and explain your models. So, we've built a model using the adult dataset. After a bit of feature engineering, we use the first six columns to train a model. These are features like a person's level of education and marital status. We want to use these to predict if a person's annual income is above or below $50,000. In algorithm fairness, it is convention to reframe the target variable so that the positive prediction will lead to some benefit. So we take above $50,000 as the positive prediction and below 50,000 as the negative prediction. If we predict that the person's income is above 50,000, they will receive a loan. Otherwise, they will not receive a loan. In other words, the positive prediction will lead to the benefits of receiving a loan. Another convention is to reformulate protected features as binary variables, where one represents a privileged group and zero represents an unprivileged group. So going forward, for race, we'll define our protected features so that white is the privileged group. For sex, we'll define it so that male is the privileged group. By splitting the population into groups, we can compare model performance on these groups. This is done using metrics based on the model's confusion matrix, which breaks down the number of correct and incorrect predictions. For example, false positives on the number of incorrect positive predictions made by the model. In other words, this is the number of people who the model predicted to make over 50,000, but who actually made under 50,000. Similarly, true positives are the number of correct positive predictions, true negatives and false neg negatives are the number of correct and incorrect negative predictions. This brings us to the first metric used to measure fairness, accuracy. Actually, we'll see that this is not always the best metric to use. Accuracy is the number of true negatives and true positives over the total number of observations. In other words, it is the percentage of correct predictions. Here, we have the accuracy of our model by the protected features. For both protected features, you can see that the accuracy is higher for the unprivileged group. Okay, so what's the problem? Based on this, it seems like the model is actually biased towards the privileged group. The issue is that accuracy can hide the true consequences of a model. Remember, a positive prediction will lead to the benefit of receiving a loan. An incorrect positive prediction would decrease accuracy, but those people would still be better off due to this mistake. Accuracy can be useful in explaining the general performance of a model, but we still need metrics that capture the benefit resulting from model predictions. One way to do this is to use the true positive rate, or TPR. The denominator is the number of actual positives in our data set. The numerator is the number of correctly predicted positives. So the TPR is the percentage of actual positives that were correctly predicted as positive. For our problem, we can interpret this as the percentage of people who should have received loans and did receive loans. Or in other words, this is the percentage of people who have rightfully benefited from the model. Here, 
we have our models TPR for the privileged and unprivileged groups. We can see that they are lower for the unprivileged groups, meaning a smaller percentage of these groups have rightfully benefited from the model. We can go further by finding the TPR at the intersection of the protected features. The TPR is even lower when the person is in both unprivileged groups. In fact, the TPR for white males is over 50% higher than for females of other races. Using TPRs leads us to our first definition of fairness, equal opportunity. Under this definition, we consider a model to be fair if the TPRs of the privileged and unprivileged groups are equal. In practice, we give some leeway for statistical uncertainty. We can require the differences to be less than a certain cutoff. For our analysis, we have taken the ratio of unprivileged to privileged. The ratio must be larger than some predefined percentage. So, TPR allows us to capture those who have rightfully benefited from a model. But this is not the only way a person can benefit from model predictions. We can also use false positive rates or FPRs to capture model benefit. FPR is the number of incorrect positive predictions over the number of actual negatives. This gives the percentage of people who should not have received loans, but did receive loans. So FPR gives the percentage of people who have wrongfully benefited from the model. Yeah, you can see the FPRs for our model. These are higher for the privileged group. This tells us that a higher percentage of males and a higher percentage of white people have received loans when they should not have received loans. This leads us to our second definition of fairness, equalized odds. Like with equal opportunity, it requires that true positive rates are equal. It also requires that false positive rates are equal. This means that equalized odds can be thought of as a stricter definition of fairness. It requires that a similar percentage of the groups both rightfully and wrongfully benefit from model predictions. So moving on to our last definition, disparate impact. We start by calculating the PPP rates. This is the percentage of people who have been correctly or incorrectly predicted as positive. For our problem, we can interpret this as the percentage of people who have received loans. You can see these rates for our model. Again, these figures suggest that the model is unfair towards the unprivileged group. That is, a smaller percentage of them are benefiting from the model. Under disparate impact, we consider a model to be fair if we have equal PPP rates. Again, in practice, we use a cutoff to give some leeway. In the United States, there is a legal precedent to set this cutoff at 80%. That is, the rate for the unprivileged group should not be less than 80% of the privileged group. When using disparate impact, we should consider one of its limitations. That is, it does not take ground truth into account. Let's consider the case of a model that only makes correct predictions. We would have no false positives and the PPP rates would be equal to the percentage of actual positives in the population. In some cases, it would make sense to expect equal PPP rates for the privileged and unprivileged group. For a automated recruitment model, we would expect the model to predict an equal percentage of males and females to be high quality job candidates. In other cases, it doesn't make sense. Lighter skin is more susceptible to skin cancer and we would expect higher cancer rates for these people. In this case, a low disparate impact ratio would not be an indication of an unfair model. So this brings us to the point that it's important to think about what definitions make sense for your problem. We must also always interpret metrics in terms of the consequences faced by the people who interact with the model. Lastly, we should consider the limitations of metrics in general. Fairness is a complicated issue. It cannot necessarily be captured by a metric or even a collection of metrics. As data scientists, we need to accept this and look to approaches that go beyond data and models. That being said, based on the metrics that we've seen, our model does seem to be unfair. The question is why? A good place to start is by going back to our initial exploratory analysis. This can be used as the starting point 
for understanding the reasons for unfairness. The next question is how can we correct the unfairness? In a future video, we'll explore both quantitative and non-quantitative approaches. Or if you want to read about these straight away, I've linked to an article in the description. Related to fairness is the concept of interpretability. If you want to understand and explain your models, then look no further than the Python SHAP package. My course will teach you both the theory and application of SHAP. And for a limited time, you can get free access if you sign up to the newsletter in the description.